Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Rest assured, we are not going to spend nearly one hour in actually closing this symposium, so I intend that we are much briefer than it actually states in your printed programme. What we're going to do, uh, first of all, is I'm going to f ask Bill Morgan, who has got a very short announcement to make that he thinks will probably be of interest to many people in the audience. So this will be very brief, he tells me. Thank you, Claire. I did want to make a very brief announcement that I think is excellent news for our field. Amato Jarcha from Stanford University has just been elected to the US National Academy of Sciences. To the best of my knowledge, Amato is the only living radiation scientist in the National Academy. Specifically, his work has been on tumor hypoxia and the effects of ionizing radiation on hypoxic cells. So I think considering the number of patients that are treated with radiation therapy every day, this is a credit to our field and a boost to the radiation sciences. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. <laughs> I agree, very good news for us to be able to share. What I'm going to do now is ask uh, Jacques Lachard just to give some thoughts, overview, and a very brief summary, probably of the highlights of the symposium over the last three days. Jacques. Well, uh, it's almost impossible to summarize in a few minutes uh, what has been said. Just a few points. Of course, personal views, which do not uh, necessarily reflect uh, the position of the main commission. <laughs> I want to be prudent. <laughs> so I, I, I structure my, my presentation on uh, using the three pillars, um, science, values and experience. Uh, I mean, this is a little bit the beauty of our system that we can discuss real scientific issues, but we can also talk about religions and uh, also uh, about the mood in the unscare sessions. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting. Um, well, Concerning uh, the scientific basis of, of our system, this was session four on radiation dose and uh, session five on radiation risk. I think what, what we have seen or, or what we have heard is that there is a real continuous effort of both committees you know, to, to try to be on the top of the science. Um, as far as committee two is, is, is concerned, they try to be more realistic in the evaluation of those and trying to integrate all the complexity of, of calculating those using the best available techniques. But what is very interesting, I noticed that they try to simplify at the same time, they try to clarify what they are doing. And this is a real uh, balance uh, between inevitably, inevitable evolutions uh, which are pushed by the advancement of knowledge, by the advancement of te technology, uh, but they, they have this permanent uh, worry not to destabilize the, uh, the system. I think this was, uh, there was a lot of discussion during the liaison organization last year on this issue of evolving, but at the same time trying to preserve uh, stability as much as possible. I mean, this is very um, interesting. Work of, of uh, Committee One, here again, a continuous effort to be on the forefront of the, of the science. Uh, review, what we, we listened, uh, what we uh, heard this morning, the review about stem cells, about non-cancer effects, about the DDREF, about individual radi radiosensitivity. It was su superb, it was really high quality sometimes difficult to understand for, for someone like me. Uh, but um, they try to, to be updated on the mechanism, on the effects. They try to be updated on all epidemiological results. Um, and uh, it's very interesting to see that the Commission carefully, constantly reviews um, the, the, the science, the key concept, no, just think about the situation today. 
uh, ICRP is embarked about reviewing, revisiting the concept of uh, effective dose, the DDRF, uh, the, 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 the issue about non-cancer effects. I mean, this is a, a real global picture. And uh, as we have seen this morning, all these concepts are interrelated. Uh, it will, be, it will certainly be necessary to have a clear view of the global picture before uh, to make any important decisions. This is my feeling, uh, to move in one direction or the other. I mean, probably for the next two years or three years, there will be a lot of efforts of, all, of Committee 1 and Committee 2 and also with the support of the other committees to reach a very nice picture about where we are now with the, mo the, the advancement of the science on, on the basic blocks of, of, of our system, the scientific part of the system. Now I will touch briefly experience. There was no specific session on experience, uh, but this is one important pillar of the system. We touched experience many times during, during this, uh, this symposium. Just remember the short but fascinating story by Pedro Ortiz on the medical, uh, in, in, in the medical field. Um, a little bit of history of uh, Gérard Desmarie with aviation, uh, Mike Boyd about the contaminated site. Of course, uh, also uh, testimony from, from uh, the experience, direct experience of people living situations where they are facing day-to-day -day radiation, and that was the testimony of uh, Mrs. Ando. Uh, but I, I also like the, the, the point raised by, um, um, oh, there was the history, I, it comes back to my mind, the, the, the history of the draft was fascinating, but also your anecdote about uh, what happened in, in Unscare. I think this is very important to have that in mind, to keep that in our mind, not only scientific concept or ethical theories, but also how things have evolved, how things have moved. Uh, because experience is connecting us with the big history. Behind the history of radiation protection, there is the history of the evolution of radiation protection, there is the big history. There is the, the, the advancement of science at the turn of the century, there is, uh, of course, Hiroshima Nagasaki, which is there. there be, before, there was the radium dial painters and so on. I mean, and this is probably how we can reach out with the public, is to try to combine what we are doing with the history, with how things have evolved. I'm sure this is a, probably a way. I mean, I, I, I try at the moment to think how we could try to develop some sort of narrative. We are talking about plain language. Of course, it is obvious that we need to be uh, understood when we speak. You know, this morning, the presentation, a fascinating presentation about individual sensitivity, but uh, frankly speaking, I, I, I was lost. I was lost. I tried to figure out what this guy is talking about. <laughs> Although I had a vague idea and it's fascinating, but uh, Probably with the more plain language, it, it, would, it would facilitate the communication between us. Can you imagine with the large public? What does it mean? Um, okay, uh, now values. Uh, we just touched them. I don't go in, into details. I think the, over the last two years, as I already mentioned, there was a huge effort to try to identify what is uh, at stake in our system. It was not a matter of inventing new things, it was a matter of making explicit things which are implicit in, uh, in the system. Beyond the core values, uh, it's, it's interesting to see that there are other very important ethical issues. I, I, I will mention two, two of them. Uh, the, the issue of the interaction between human activities and the environment. I mean, uh, there was a this was touched by David Copplestone the first day, and today, of course, by, by Deborah. Um, you know, when the, she gave this example about uh, the economical cost of the contamination of the marine environment, I mean, you, you can see all this complexity and diversity, and there are a lot of ethical issues. This was raised also by Maine Commissioner uh, Niwa 
on the, on the first day the need to better combine human activities and, 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 the, and the environment. Uh, another, of course, obvious aspect for ethics is, is the, uh, the ethics related to the scientific basis of our system. Um, how to deal with the vulnerable uh, populations. We have seen the efforts of Committee 2 to try to, to, to tackle this in, in, a, in, a, in a rational way, but also in a pragmatic way. Um, but there are ethical issues behind the way to split uh, doses with one-year um, children and so on. There are uh, eth ethical issues. Without, of course, uh, uh, forgetting to, to, to mention once again this issue of individual radiant sensitivity. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> I, br I briefly had an exchange with, with, with uh, Claire on, during the, the, the talk. You can look at that it's, it's, it as maybe a frightening uh, route. You know, it's a, okay, it means that one day babies will, will uh, the very day of, of the birth, there will be a sample of blood and everything will be, will be there. And you say, okay, this is how you are going to live and this is what you are facing in the future. Ooh, but I think this is our duty certainly to develop the ethics around all that. Uh, we, we, this, is a very, this is already opening uh, a new route. Um, to finish with these ethical values and social values, um, Kun Wo Shou mentioned that uh, Task Group 94 is, is certainly uh, um, something to be seen as a founding document, the key values. The core values, the procedural values, we will certainly discuss later on if they are three, four. <laughs> um, I am convinced that, I'm clearly convinced from the discussion at the very end, it was a short, short discussion, but that, that we will need to go further and that there will be obviously other publications dealing with ethics. And I think the, the most obvious one is on the uh, ethical dimension of applying radiation in medicine. I mean, we, we, during the week, we have heard a lot of, of, of aspect. Maybe environmental, as I already mentioned uh, before. Then we had, um, okay, exper experience, science, experience, values. And of course, this is, we have the, the implementation, the practical implementation of the system. And we had two sessions on the practical implementation one on the existing exposure situation and one, of course, uh, in, in the medical field. Uh, I will be very brief. On existing exposure situation, I think no, we now see mo much clearer uh, what is at stake with this situation. What are the challenges? Importance of characterization of the situation before to do anything. It takes time. Case by case approach to use the words, uh, the favorite words of Ted Lasso, the prevailing circumstances. Um, stakeholder involvement. Uh, and uh, also, because this is very much related to existing exposure situation, this question about integrating human activities and, and environment. As far as stakeholder involvement is concerned, uh, beyond the inclusiveness, Certainly, and I don't know where is, uh, I, don't, I cannot see where is Frido, but there is, the, there is this question of empathy. And this was perfectly illustrated in the case of uh, Fukushima. Listening to the concern of people, trying to understand their concerns, their wish. Th this, is, this is the first indispensable step and uh, we are not that good with that, I have to say. <laughs> we, have not, we, we have not been trained in this way. We have been trained to, to give answers, to, to say, for this, you should do that. For that, we have an answer, which is the following. So this is certainly a very important point. And here I touch a point that I raised in my, the only question I, 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 <laughs> I raised this, this, uh, during the symposium is, how was the role of the experts, radiation protection experts in uh